Hey everybody, welcome to Texas Tau. My name is Joe. Um, here with my wife Amy and our son Daniel. And uh, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about our recent trip to uh, San Angelo State Park here in Texas. And then I think towards the end of the video, we want to talk about um, how we can actually fit three people and sometimes travel with three people in our, uh, our revel. Um, I have a little bit of confession to make. Um, I'm not actually at San Antonio State Park right now. We're actually back. Um, weekend's over with. I've had time to come back, mow the yard, get everything ready for spring. We're sitting here. So I went back and I looked at the video and, um, you know, I took a lot of great videos and some did some great talks and some of the stuff that we did out there. But uh, unfortunately, I forgot to turn the audio on. So um, it's just a lot of video. It looks like me talking, blah, 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 with no words coming out. So um, Amy, who now um, is my uh, content advisor and my um, director, especially since she's the YouTube expert now, since she spends so much time on YouTube, <laughs> I just said, you know what? Let's just do a voiceover on the trip. And you can just talk about what we did on the trip, show the campsite a little bit, talk a little bit about San Antonio, the San Angelo, not San Antonio, two different cities, St. Angelo State Park. And then we could redo the piece about um, how we do the third. So we're going to go ahead and move into the voiceover again. I personally don't care too much for voiceovers, but I got some video. Why waste it, right? And, of course, you know, that's what my director said to do. So we're going to jump into it and um, show you that. And then uh, towards the end, we'll just come here and take a look and talk about how we um, actually travel in here with basically me and Amy and uh, Daniel and uh, – you know, how he fits in here. You know, Daniel's, he's 15, right? He's not really an adult, but he's as big as an adult. In fact, the kid's 6'2", almost 6'3", right? And he plays water polo, so he's, you know, he's, he's a pretty big kid, right? So we'll, we'll talk about how we make all that work in here. Um, so stay tuned, all right? So let's get going. So we left Thursday after work and decided we'd drive down to San Angelo and do some work, uh, you know, from the van Friday. Because the nice thing about we picked this park was because, it, you know, three hours away from Dallas, but it's close to San Angelo. As you can see, the park is pretty flat and open. And the Wi-Fi has actually turned out pretty good. So um, after, you know, a, a good three-hour drive on Town 20 from uh, the Dallas area, you know, we started coming into uh, the park at San Angelo. And here is um, <clears throat> the entryway coming up. So it's a typical park built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, like most of the Texas state parks, right? So, um... You know, it's right on the corner of the uh, the prairie prairie grassland, and you know the West Texas Panhandle scrub. You, you kind of see some of the, the here, some of the trees, and and uh, you'll see a lot of the red dirt. And then also um, to the east, you know, we have a little bit of the uh, hill country outside of Austin. So I'm looking forward to actually coming here. It looks looks beautiful, and I hear I hear the campsites are really really pretty big. You know, a, a nice, uh, nice park to be at. So here we are crossing through the gate and coming up on the front entrance of the park. <laughs> As you can probably tell, we're not driving here. We decided to walk out in the morning and I decided to film this video to show you all the beginning of it here. You know, every Texas State Park as you come in has a, they have a, like a cork board up front where it tells you about the park. And if you come in late, the honor box is there for the pay for your park site, your campsite. And also, if you prepaid, they leave your sticker and your registration on the board. So you just get your board and then head down into your campsite. They also have, you know, maps in there and a little bit of basic information about the park. And we got some open prairie. And then you can see some of the the, uh, the park caretakers. I guess they call them the park hosts. Have a, uh, they're, they're building there, right? Um, yeah, you know, so far it just looks like you're... Your, your typical state park from um so once you make you it know, through the gate you know we head on down the road and then you start seeing some of the signs and everything for where your park site is we um actually parked down into the first section of um the campsites and i believe it was called the red Roy rollo i can't say that word um campsite area and you can see the sign up here uh, that tells us where we're going to go there was all the different campsites, you know, how to get down to the lake and everything. There it is, the Red Oreo camping area is where we need to go, right? And then also, I kind of was kind of quaint that they still had a Smokey the Bear, um, you know, for say, fire, forest fires from the U.S. National Park Service. Kind of vintage. I remember that from uh, 
when I was a kid in elementary school, <laughs> many moons so ago. So as you go farther down the road, you can kind of see we're starting to come into the campsite area. And look, this campsite is really pretty fantastic. I mean, it's it's wide open, right? Um, every campsite has about an acre of camp area. It's really pretty nice, and it's really flat, right? Um, I'd hate to be here in the summertime because there's really no shade. But, I mean, in the fall and the winter, it, it looks like it's pretty nice. Um, you can see there's an old road trek there that was our, our neighbors. They're actually full-timers in the van out of Michigan. Here's one of the nice walking trails we decided to go on. Um, I'm, I'm walking with Becca, and of course, it's Amy in front. And we're walking uh, down the trail. You know, the nice thing about this is, like we said, it's kind of a, a convergence of um, three areas, right? You can see the clear part over there is actually the prairie land, right? And then we got the Texas Panhandle area kind of off to the left, and the West Texas kind of the desert scrub. You see the dirt's kind of red. And I know... Um, Amy's really saying something here, and it's pretty profound what she said. I really wish I would have got the recording right when I took the video. But um, I think she was trying to tell me the same thing about it being uh, prairie and then the, um, the the Texas panhandle, kind of West Texas area, and then having the hill country off uh, just a short drive to the east and how they all kind of merge here in uh, San Angelo. Yeah, you know, some nice vegetation. We got the cactus here, and we got some of the, the, the mesquite trees and everything. And here's Amy um, trying to tell me about the, the geology here, and I really wish I would have gotten it. Um, it was really profound. <laughs> well, I can't remember. Again, I told you, we're just having fun here, right? So I know the video quality is, is just crap, but I'll get it straight here pretty soon. You know, I'm working a full-time job, and we're just weekend wear warriors having a good time. And here we have some lovely pictures of, uh, you know, the revel and sunset at San, San Angelo Park, courtesy of um, my wife, Amy. She's, she took some really, really nice pictures, especially around sunset here. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous sunsets. Um, you know, you, you can't beat West Texas for, for this kind of views. And then, of course, here we are leaving the park and heading back to uh, to Plano. Y'all come back. But this is the end. Stick around. All right. Well, there you have it. I'm glad you liked, uh, you know, San Angelo State Park. We definitely had a good time. Um, but, you know, one thing I will say is, you know, we've been to San Angelo. We've been to Copper Break. Great places in the Texas Panhandle. The problem is, is, you know, it's the Panhandle. Um, there's a lot of dirt. The dirt's red. The red dirt kind of gets everywhere in the van, right? So um, one of the things that we had to do besides me mowing the yard is, you know, we had to vacuum and sweep and mop to get all the red dirt out of here. And then I went ahead and washed the shank, washed the van and cleaned off the, uh, you know, the um, solar panels in the back so we can get some in the top so we can get some, uh, you know, some sunlight in. So anyway. I digress. So let's let's get back to what we wanted. To, what I want to talk about is how do we make it work with with the three of us in here. Um, well, it's not hard, but I ain't gonna say it's easy either. And I said that the big the big part of making this work, and I really hate to say this because I know Daniel's probably gonna watch this. Maybe he thinks the channel's a kind of a joke and he's afraid he's gonna embarrass him. But he may end up watching this. Is the big part of the third person in here when you bring kids is. The kids got to have an open mind, right? I mean, you know, they they can't not having a computer. They're going to be outside. They're going to be doing fun things, right? Spending time with the parents. They got to enjoy that, right? I mean, if you got the kid that you know wants to stay inside all the time, likes air conditioning, um, you know, you know, see likes to play the computer or something, try to bring them along. They may not enjoy it. Now, I'm not saying Daniel's like that. He definitely is like that sometimes. But I think after all the complaining and all that, I think he really does have a good time coming with us. So let's go ahead and talk about um, how we make this work. If you just, you just give me one second. I need to flip the camera over. So if you just hang on, I'm going to pause this and flip the camera over. We'll come back and talk to you. Just... Okay, I'm back. So, you know, I bought this this nice new uh, gimbal, fancy gimbal that I thought would work out pretty good. Um, but I'm having a hard time figuring out how to use it. So I'm just going to go old school and hold the phone this way. I hope we don't make it too choppy. But let's talk about how we get three people in the van, right? So I wish I could say getting three people in here is easy. Um, it's not easy and it's not hard. You know, the first part about it is, is you have to have a kid 
with a great attitude who really wants to come out and, and do something, right? And spend some time with parents and going to be outside and, and, and enjoy being out there, right? So that's the first thing it takes. Because, you know, if you get a, a, a you know, 15-year-old who just wants to stay home, play computer, and talk to his friends, and don't want to come out and sit outside, don't want to be outside because, you know, he can't take a shower for a couple of days and makes his hair stink. I hope Tanner doesn't listen to this because he's going to be embarrassed, right? But, you know, no one's going to have a good time. So if you think kid comes out and has a good time, wants to be a mom and dad, you can make it work, right? But anyway, so Daniel complained a little bit about it a couple times, but I, I think in the end we got it figured out, and he's working out okay. So the first thing to know is the Mercedes is super easy to drive, right? I've said it before. It's real comfortable. you got enough room in the seats up front. So typically what we do is I bribe him, right? He's a 15-year-old kid, right? He's got his, his um, learner's permit so he can drive this. So we let him drive for a couple hours. One of us sits beside him, and he drives. So he's got all the room in the world, so that helps. So that works out pretty good. But the problem is, is if you're the unlucky person who has to sit back here in the back cushion, right, you know, God love you. Because there's a couple of things you're probably going to have to do to fix this before you come. The first thing, and I'll get down here and see if I can show it here with a selfie camera, is, is the cushion, right? So, you know, you remember the galley, you got the back cushion, the bottom cushion, right? So this this, this fabric is like a... A leatherette, I guess is what they call it. It's kind of like a vinyl, you know. Um, it feels real nice and long, luxurious, and the cushion's soft. The problem is, is underneath here, that's carpet, right? That's that that industrial stuff in there, and it gets slippery on this on this countertop, this counter covering, right? It's a laminate. It's slippery on top of wood. So if you're sitting here, you know, and the driver's Hitting the brakes a little hard, turning the corners a little hard. You're sitting on here. You've got weight on the cushion, right? In my case, probably a lot more weight than somebody else would have, right? This cushion goes sliding forward, right? It's not comfortable. You have to stop all the time, sit up, push the cushion back. Before you know it, it's almost on the floor, and you're almost on the floor with the cushion. So that ain't going to work. So um, my wife, who, uh, by the way, has now been promoted to my content advisor, promoted herself to my content advisor and the uh, producer because um, she watches a lot of YouTube, thought that maybe what we could do is remove the cushion. So we removed the cushion and we got one of those seat cushion covers from the outdoor furniture stuff that we have. You know, it's cotton, it's got a thinner cushion, put it on, on there. Problem is, is that laminate is still really slippery with it. So that didn't work. So the third solution was go to Costco because <laughs> you know, Costco solves everything, right? I love Costco. So um, we got a, uh, one of those Type S gel seats, right, for the driver's side seat. Good news is it didn't slip because it's got some sol some um, silicone on there, beads. It didn't slip, right? And the cushion was soft, but the problem was it was so small, you couldn't move around and get comfortable on there, and you're restricted to where the cushion was, right? So that didn't work. So <laughs> my solution this time and I know this one's going to work, is um, we come back down here, and what we did is we found this this silicone, like, countertop mat, right, um, at, at um, Target, you know, and it's that silicone, and my wife actually is taking this silicone mat, and she's put this on the um, countertop here, and left it on here and put stuff on here, and we've driven with it, and it's never slipped, and we also even put it on the... Uh, the, the cabinet shelf back here to keep in the bathroom to keep things from slipping around in there. That really works. So my solution is, you know what? Let's just put the the, the seat back because it looks good and it's soft to sit on. It just slips too much. Let's put it on the silicone and see what happens. So we put it on there. I've sat on it here a little bit. Haven't sat on it driving yet, but it's not slipping. So I think that's going to help. So we got two people sitting up front. We got this thing in the back situated so i think it's going to work out okay right so the next thing we need to talk about let me flip my camera around is how we sleep in the van so um now i want to preface this by you know the plan is not to have the kids sleep in the van all the time right okay um only when the weather's bad when it's really cold he has to sleep in there um you know it's a urban camping situation or um 
you know, it's raining or wind's blowing too bad or something like that. He sits back here. But the plan is, is, and we've actually done this a couple times and I've actually taken naps down here is, is to put him on the floor underneath here. So of course, you know, we move all the boxes out of the back of the, out of the back of the garage. Right. And then we lay a yoga mat down and the sleeping bag on top of the yoga mat and it works out. Okay. But there are a couple issues you need to know about. First of all, you know, the sleeping bag's extremely slippery. And the yoga mat can be slippery. So, you know, it's hard to get comfortable in the sleeping bag. And, that you know, the nylon doesn't feel good. I don't like sleeping in the sleeping bag. So that, that's not that's not a good solution, I don't think. But, you know, we got the, the, the area rugs down here on top of the coin carpet to keep the, the coin protected. And, you know, we just take it out, shake it, vacuum and clean it. It's, it's, it works out pretty good and it keeps things from slipping around. So we like that. Um, another issue is the two back corners. On the, the, in the back between the, the door, the door corners and the driver's side and passenger side, for some reason, the bottom corners get cold and there's, there's like a little draft coming in maybe because there's no insulation back there or something. So, you know, we put some clothes back there and piled some stuff in there and that kind of helped keep up the draft down the draft a little bit. I'm sure a lot of people insulate these things, but, you know, I'm not going to do it. I paid enough money for this. We live in Texas and I could go a lot of snow. Probably no need to do it. But anyway, um, just know that it gets a little cold in those corners. You might have to do something about it. So a couple of solutions we had for the times that he comes with us or we know he's going to come with us. So we might need this for an emergency is we got another rug like this, a runner. It's an area rug. It's real narrow, but it goes from the back and it comes out here. So we're going to use that probably on top of the yoga mat. And then I think we're going to do is ditch the sleeping bag. We're going to bring a um, sheets and a blanket to put down on top of that. So uh, make it a little bit more comfortable. And then, when we're done with it, we can throw it up on top of the bed and then lift the bed up and it's just another piece of bedding. So that'll work. The next issue you have to worry about here is the damn dog, right? So we got a Labradoodle. She's a, a year, year and a half, 60 pounds. The dog can find the most comfortable place in the house. And if she gets there first to curl up in a ball and go to sleep, she ain't moving that spot for nothing, right? So <laughs> there's been times that I've gone down there to take a nap to try this out. Or Daniel's gone down there. The first thing you have to do is fight with a dog. You get the dog to move. And it's hard to get her to move. But you can eventually get to get her to move. But then she does everything she can do to get you to move. <laughs> so she can get her spot back. Right? But eventually everybody curls in there and gets comfortable. And she gets it. She's okay with that. So that's good. The next thing you have to worry about is, you know, Daniel's almost 6'3". He's probably 6'2". You know, 6'1", half 6'2". His feet come out to probably about, you know, about where the, the vent is down there. Right? A little bit farther. So if we have to get in the bed, off the bed in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or something, his feet are in the way and we need to make him move or curl up his legs a little bit so we can close the bathroom. Not a big thing, but, you know, once or twice a night, he can deal with it. But then we get up early, right? You know, usually up by 6, 6.30 in the morning. So he can get up out, get up off the floor, get on the bed, and he can stay in the bed until 2, 3 o'clock or all we care, right? We really don't care about that, right? So he can go sleep up there or not. And then the nice thing is, is when he sleeping you know we take the bathroom door open and we prop it like this so now he's got kind of a little door in the back to protect himself right but just know that this is really just a not a permanent situation this is just sometimes when the weather's too cold or we're, we're doing some urban camping because we're traveling somewhere that's so why we're going to have to do that so then he can sleep back there for a while while we're up front doing all our stuff right so, you know, that, that situation's taken care of. So that's how we do. We have to sleep inside. You just have to make use of the floor. But then now we come back to the, um, to the real issue at hand, right? And that's talking about why we come camping, right? So I, I, I've talked to my wife about this a couple of times. Um, you know, I, I like being in the van when it's at night, when it's cozy and it's the two of us. You know, we turn the seats around. She sits here in the galley. I sleep in the seat up front and it's turned around. It's real comfortable. I think it's kind of romantic. I told my wife the other day, it's a good thing she loves me because <laughs> being that close, I don't know how long our relationship could survive. But, you know, it's all good. We like it. I think it's kind of romantic. But um, one, one time we went camping, it was pretty cold and Daniel was in here. We, we put them all around. I think there's enough room for all three of us to sit here. I think he just thought it was too close for mom and dad to mom and dad, right? Because, you know, we ain't cool like he is, so... He um he actually came back in the garage. We put the bed up. Well, let me see it this way. We actually put the bed up, and then he can get under the garage. So, you know, we put the bed up. So the bed goes up, right, on the lift. And then when you lift it up, 
he just goes in the back and kind of siblings up against the door a little bit and lays down and then he can do his computer thing and whatever he wants to do in the back, talk to his friends while mom and dad are hanging up up front. So that's one thing to do. But what I talk, keep telling my wife is, you know, we go camping to stay outside, right? A- a- actually, right? So the way to really make this work is as soon as you get to the campsite, get your area rug out, you know, your, your patio rug out, throw your awning out, um, put the chairs up outside. Everybody's outside. You go hike, you go walk, you go swim, you go kayak, you ride the bikes, you know, get, pull out the ATV, whatever you need to do. You got to spend a time outside. Um, you know, um, I bring an extension cord, a uh, 50 foot extension cord. So I can take that and plug it into either the back of the rebel or the front of the rebel here that, the, you know, there's some, there's a plug by the step and then you can run the extension cord to the picnic table. My wife gets the induction cooktop out of the drawer and then she cooks outside. She absolutely loves that. We did that, um, actually this weekend at San Angelo state park and I didn't record that, but it worked out pretty good. And she likes that a lot. Right. Built, built a bonfire, all that stuff. And I, I think one of the mistakes I made, you know, as, as a dad, right, trying to get Daniel to do this is um, we don't have a lot of toys, right? You know, my wife and I, we enjoy hiking. We enjoy being out in nature. My wife likes to go take a bunch of pictures. You know, the dog likes to walk. You know, we, we walk here every day, three to five miles, six miles sometimes. Um, when we go camp, we like to do 10 miles, right? Daniel doesn't like that, right? You know, but he did say if I had an ATV, He'd come. Well, naturally, you know, go shell out some money. ATV be fine, right? So we're thinking about doing that, right? Maybe an ATV. My problem is if we get an ATV, I really need to make sure he's going to come, right? Because the ATV is going to be for him. I'll probably enjoy riding an ATV, but it's really going to be for him. So if we, we get it, and he's got to come with us, right? Um, another thing we thought about is getting a, you know, a couple electric e-bikes, some mountain bikes. So, you know, he could ride. I could ride with him. Um, we could take the, the e-bikes out to the trails, you know, um, he, he would like that. Give us something to do. Another thing is, is we like to kayak, right? So everywhere we go where they have kayaks that we can rent, we kayak, right? So we're thinking about buying a kayak or two and putting them up on the roof. You know, my wife is really concerned about how to put a kayak up there, but there's all kinds of kayak mounts and everybody brings a kayak and, you know, go look at Peter Holcomb from Famagogo and they carry all of, like, they got like 10 kayaks. He fits most of them on the roof of the Rebel. So um, <clears throat> it's doable, right? So, you know, that that's one thing that we can do is do that. Get that done. And then, of course, you know, the tent, you got to stay in the tent. The tent's got an air mattress. You know, I have an air mattress. I blow it up with the extension cord. It's queen size. He can sleep in the tent on the air mattress. My uh, dog can sleep out there with him. You know, they don't have to fight over spot. They're both on someplace soft. It works out pretty well. My wife even wanted to go sleep on the air mattress, right, in the in the tent. So I think a couple of times we can go sleep in the tent. Daniel can come sleep in here in the, uh, in, uh, on the bed in the Rebel, or even, you know, that the tent has, um, a three-person tent, so we can go make that work. You know, and truthfully, I like sleeping here in the bed of the rebel because as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm sleeping. So we can make it work, right? So anyway, I know I'm getting a little long-winded and probably putting everybody to sleep. But, uh, you know, just to recap what I said, how do we fit three people in here? Well, first of all, you know, kids got to have a good attitude. It's going to want to come, have something to do, you need some entertainment, you know, get them off the computer, get them outside and enjoy spending time. Second of all, you got to get the, uh, the seat under control in the galley. Right. And the dinette seat that 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 um, cushion is really slippery. You got to find a way Velcro, double sided tape, um, silicone mat, something to keep that 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 from slipping and sliding around when you sit on it. When you drive, it'll be a lot more comfortable. Third of all, if you have to sleep in the um, inside the van, it's easy to make it comfortable. Just make sure you don't get too slippery. And then the big one is, is you got to live like like outside, outside the van. That's why we're here. Right. You know, get the tents, get the chairs, do everything. Try not to get to keep everybody crammed in the van. Just get outside and enjoy, enjoy going because, my God, you're camping. That's why we got the camper instead of, uh, you know, Class A. Well, there's other reasons, right? I hope did a whole video on that. But, you know, to get outside and, and, and to do stuff like that. So, um, anyway, that's my recommendation. I really do appreciate the time you spent with me today and allowing me to uh, go ahead and rant and rave about some things. Um, I hope you learned something. You know, if you like it, do the whole like and subscribe thing like everybody else tells you to do on a on uh, YouTube, right? And um, thanks for coming. Rev on. Have a good day, everybody.